Well, good morning. We've got a pretty busy day planned out so far for the day. Dad and Tim both took off with loads of winter wheat to the elevator. Then Dad's heading to Scobie to pick up a load of Durham seed. Uh, Burgo guy should be here within an hour. I got fertilizer here in probably about 20 minutes. Um, Tim got the auger set up before he took that load in this morning. And we're gonna be real close to hitting the field seeding. The one hang up though, a little breezy to spray, but I think that'll, hopefully that goes down here and we'll, uh, by evening and get a load of spray done, head of the drill and start planting today or first thing tomorrow morning. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, the Burgo guys are here now and they're getting uh, walking tannins we had trouble with last year. They would stick on us if we get through a washout or whatever and they would get stuck one up, one down. They're getting that uh, figured out, putting a grease circ in it and they're adding a little spacer so they're not so tight in there. So, so the roads are definitely dry now and getting pretty dusty. Can't even see my trailer tires. I can barely see my drive tires. So how do you know if somebody's coming up behind you, well, you do what's called a crazy Ivan. And if you've ever seen that movie about an October submarine, red hunting, if you know, you know, you do a crazy Ivan. Move over, pull it back, look in your right side mirror, don't see anybody back there. Good to go. So I've seen some, uh, comments previous videos about uh, why we run sleeper trucks why not run day cabs um, generally the reason is is because the uh, yeah I just waved at a car who I don't know who they are Montana things generally the reason is because sleeper trucks are cheaper than day cabs day cabs are more in demand supply and demand eco 101 right the other good reason to have a sleeper truck is you can carry parts oil chicken feed and bottle cap feed and still have a place to hold your lunchbox so there are definitely pluses to buying a sleeper truck I like nailed that one, hole in one. Do you think I caught any of that on video? No. <laughs> anyway, 
We got a load of canola blend. Blah, blend huh. It's hard to speak English in this early morning stuff. Another load of canola blend is on its way. Should be here within half an hour. The other two bins to the west are urea, which we may start pulling some out of today to keep Tony going in the air seater. Anyway. So yeah, load of canola blend coming. And let to drop the swing away. And then wait for him. A couple other odds and ends while I wait for him. Always busy. If you look right out there. That's an air seeder. That's our air seeder. Anyway, had to uh Climb up here. There's other ways of doing this, but this is as high as this auger will go. And you can see how much is down in there. So when you push it over, it falls in here, but it kinks this, and that gets stuck down there. Here, yeah, come up and give it a smack. Sometimes you can go back and forth, but I had this thing in here so perfect, I didn't want to move the tractor. And sometimes it's easier to just climb up here. So that and I thought I'd give you a view. There's a sprayer. We got one load through it yesterday. Warren was spraying. Uh, it is an absolute gorgeous morning this morning. I'm sure Warren, it's supposed to be really nice all day. Um, Warren will probably be here to start spraying again soon. You can see we're still dealing with some water. Of course, this is the alfalfa field, so that's not such a big deal. And yeah there's that water out there there's a few other places we're not sure if the frost underneath the water has gone out yet but we should know if there is frost and it disappears the water will disappear within a day or two anyway like i said what a beautiful morning well here goes nothing see 20 What's beeping at me? Oh, I agree, I lost GPS signal. That's cool. See, 2023 is apparently off to a rough start. You gotta do it old school. You know, sometimes it's not always about the guy in the air seater or the sprayer. Sometimes it's about the guy that's programming the remote on the trailer openers. And then you push and hold that button for five seconds. Three, four, one thousand, five, one thousand. And then when you let off, device found, add device. And the fun part, thumbing through here to put a good name for it. Got my name, rear, accept, name changed, press select, then you have to set stops. Set and stops. Accept, fully closed position, which it is, done, to the fully open position. That'll be a minute. Untarping a B train. It's not impossible. Well, it's crooked, but definitely helps to untarp the B train when it's straight. Yeah, there's a story behind that. Might have been an issue. If it works, it's not dumb, right? As heavy as fertilizer is, we're moving it with the auger to break up the chunks because sometimes it gets chunky. Um, anyway, as heavy as the fertilizer is, this auger motor just couldn't pull it full. 
have to keep that hopper full or else it, as the auger flighting moves it splashes it out well i couldn't keep it full because it would choke the auger motor down and so i'd have to shut the flow off well then that would empty that out and just throw it everywhere so i'm recycling cardboard that's about as full as i can run it without it bogging the motor down too bad but you can see how it splashes all over the cardboard without the cardboard it splashes all over there that's it for urea a little bigger pile in there i don't know if you can see the front pile pile in there one pile in there now potash and durham seed Well, there we have it. Wheat mix in the lead trailer, potash in the front of the rear, and Durham seed in the rear trailer. So, get them covered up and get it out to the field. Well, going back to the massive runoff situation that we have, it's obviously just a real low spot. But anyway, it kind of washed this culvert out. Just kind of. So, um, Warren found it with the sprayer yesterday. Dumped a couple buckets of rocks from a rock pile that we picked, or somebody picked, over on that side, just trying to widen it out a little bit, shore it up a little bit, give it something to hang on to. But, then this guy opened up. So, yeah. That's the culvert right there. I can feel the top of the culvert, which is poked through. So any amount of rock that I put in there is just gonna keep filling up the culvert. Oh joy, oh joy. That'll fill a hole. I got like a half a mile trek that I gotta go in order to get the rock that I'm trying to use to fill it in. So uh, I got maybe eight buckets in there. I think I've got enough and um, level it off, try and scratch some gravel around. Cover it up, call it good. See how well my culvert crossing did. It's gonna be tight. Perfect, as Nacho would say. Well, we are cranking along really good. Everything seems to be working pretty good. Spent a little time messing around with fan speeds. We have not ran this much uh, product through the mineral banders yet because we had a lot of carryover fertilizer uh, last year, the year before. So this is the first year of putting the down bar product. Had a few plugs earlier, got that all straightened out. This is a Brigo 3420 model, 100 foot wide, 12 inch space. Uh, it has mid-row banders, which means uh, the bands of fertilizer mid-row between the seed. So we got, from the outside, we got a seed row and then a fertilizer row, and then a seed row, seed row, fertilizer row. goes all the way across the drill, so between every other set of seed rows, there's a fertilizer row. Uh, we're also putting fertilizer down with the derm. We're planting derm right now. Uh, that is the pasta grain. They use uh, the, the durum seed, they grind it into flour, they make pasta out of it. Um, it's different than wheat. 
wheat is white inside, that's what makes the white flour. This is the same color as like spaghetti noodles inside. It's kind of like yellowish, translucent yellow. Um, so that is, oh, there's like mud right there. Interesting. Uh oh. Little boggy right there. That surprised me. The cart is a 1300 bushel. Um, it's a 9 series, 9 1300 is the number on the side, so every tank has its own scale. That's super handy for calibrating. I actually haven't done a calibration. I do running calibration, and it's using the scales and knows how much I've used and does it all automatically. So, yeah, that's that. Um, seeding into peace double right now, and it's just nice and mellow. Lots of moisture yet uh, from all the snow melt. So, also, like, some sloughs that the water just disappeared in the last 24 hours are a little, a little soft yet, too. haven't heard the hunter brothers yet you should go check them out five farming brothers from uh, not too far from here in canada really cool music but uh it is i don't even know what time it is i think it's one o'clock in the morning 12 54 time to go home see you tomorrow thanks for watching and don't forget farm hard pray harder see you next video